why do we need as non-mathematics students I need to know what the formal definition of a limit at infinity is. We can use our limit rules, right? Uh, yes, we can, but hold on a moment. Uh, the formal definition of a limit uses a certain type of reasoning, argumentation. And here we have, well, it is in my opinion, the easiest examples of this reasoning. You may not need this at this particular point, but you will encounter a particular reasoning behind it later on. And since this is the easiest example of this argument, it is nice if you have already encountered it in this relatively easy setting. So, let's see uh, what the limit at infinity is formally. Well, uh, suppose we have some function uh, with domain a infinity to r, where a is some number. So we just have to, it doesn't really matter what this a is, we have to start somewhere. So as a domain we have 1 infinity or 2 infinity or 3 infinity or pi infinity, that doesn't matter, this left boundary, that's not so relevant. We just need some left boundary. And uh, then we say that the limit x to infinity fx equals l, what does that mean formally? Well, it means intuitively that f of x approaches l if x becomes large enough. And it's well, exactly what the formal definition it says. It says that, well, this f of x minus l, this is so the absolute value of the difference, we can that get that arbitrarily small, so smaller than any epsilon bigger than zero, provided, of course, that we take our x large enough. So provided we take x bigger or equal than n. So full definition is then uh, limit f of x, uh, x to infinity equals l, means that uh, for every epsilon bigger than zero, we can find an answer that if we are bigger than that at n, our f of x is closer than this epsilon to l. So, how does that work in practice? Well, we've seen our f of x equals 1 over x, and we have already seen that this uh, guess that its limit l equals 0 if we take x to infinity. How can we show that formally? Well, then we have to look at the difference of f of x minus l. So, we look at f of x minus l, f of x equals 1 over x, l equals 0. Uh, well, the absolute value of that equals 1 over x because our, all our x's were positive, we are going to plus infinity. Uh, and then we know that, it, that uh, if x is bigger than n, then 1 of x is smaller or equal than 1 over n. So provide x bigger or equal than n, that we know our f of x minus l is smaller or equal than 1 over n. So how can we show that this becomes arbitrarily small if we pick n big enough? Well, for any epsilon bigger than 0, uh, we can choose n equals 2 of epsilon. I notice that this n will become very big. If someone gives me epsilon equals 10 minus 3, that means that I pick as my n 2 divided by 10 minus 3, so I simply pick n equals 2000. Uh, well, if we pick n equals 2 over epsilon, then 1 over n equals epsilon over 2, and that is in particular strictly smaller than epsilon. And then we see that fx minus l smaller equal than 1 over n, and 1 over n is strictly smaller than epsilon for all x bigger equal than n. So that means that we can fx closer to l uh, than any epsilon bigger than, uh, uh, for any epsilon bigger than zero, provided we pick our uh, x large enough. And we have now shown formally that the limit x to infinity of fx equals zero. Let's try to do this argument for a slightly more complicated function. So, uh, we want to show that the limit of x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1 equals 1. So, why do we think this limit equals 1? Well, we have this intuitive reasoning that if x becomes very big, that we can neglect the minus 1 and the plus 1s, so we get x squared over x squared equals 1. So, that is why we think this limit will probably be 1. So I now want to show this. How are we going to do that? So we have to look again at f of x minus l, absolute value. So f of x minus 1. We can simplify by uh, choosing uh, the same denominator. So we, uh, uh, our 1 becomes x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1. And you'll see that the x squareds will cancel out. And you get an absolute value of minus 2 over x squared plus 1 equals 
2 of x squared plus 1. And now we know that x squared plus 1 is always bigger or equal than x squared, so 1 over x squared plus 1 is smaller than x, uh, 1 over x squared, so that's what we use over there. And since uh, same argument, x is bigger than n, so x squared is bigger than n squared, so 1 over x squared is smaller than 1 over n squared. That's the second uh, inequality over here, uh, provided x is bigger or equal than n. So then we see that our f of x minus l, an absolute value, is always smaller than 2 over n squared. So uh, which n do we need to pick now, given some epsilon? Well, uh, given some epsilon bigger than 0, which is typically a very small value, we take as our n this strange value. Ah, and why do we do that? Well, this guess comes from this inequality over here, of course. Uh, if you take n equals the square root of 2 over epsilon, then uh, uh, epsilon equals 2 over n squared. And that is exactly what we saw, that our average minus l is smaller equal than 2 over n squared. So with this choice of n, we have that our average minus l becomes smaller than epsilon. We can f get average arbitrarily small. And a final example of a limit at infinity. Uh, so if you want to show that the limit x squared for x going to infinity equals infinity, then we have to show that we can get out of x arbitrarily large, provided we, pay, uh, we uh, pick x very large. So we have to show that for every l, we can find an n such that f of x becomes bigger than this l, provided x bigger or equal than that n. So given some l, what n should we take? Well, we choose n equals square root of l plus 1. Looks a bit odd, but this n does the job. Because what happens then? f of x equals x squared. Well, x squared uh, is bigger or equal than n squared, because x was bigger or equal than n. We picked our, as our n at square root of l plus 1, some big number. So n squared equals square root of l plus 1 squared. Work out the brackets, we get that l squared plus 2 squared of l plus 1, which is bigger than l, where we can take any l we want. So provided we take our x bigger than this n squared of l plus 1, our f of x will be bigger than l, where l can be any large number. So that's how we show that we can make our l of x arbitrarily big, given that we take our x big enough, which shows that the limit x to infinity of l of x equals infinity.